At Forever Paws Animal Shelter, our mission is simple. Place these valued animals in loving homes. Forever Paws Animal Shelter, giving animals a new leash on life. Hey, how's it going guys? Brad the Guitar just here. I'm starting to get a little bit sick, but <laughs> uh, so bear with me if my voice is not very strong in today's video, but I wanted to show you this. Um, I made a couple videos about an Ampeg uh, GU-12 recently, and this amplifier has come back to me. It went to the owner. He played it at uh, his church. He played it at home for a little while. I said it was it was great, sounded great. Uh, I took it to his church gig. Uh, plugged it in and like right before they were getting ready to start the service the drummer back there heard a pop and uh, He said it, his amp started smoking so he killed it and brought it back to me And I said well man shoot that sounds you know I, I felt kind of bad actually because I did a lot of work on this thing And I was hoping it wasn't something that I had did and luckily luckily it wasn't but check this out This is a nice one if uh, were to flip this thing over, you wouldn't notice anything out of the ordinary, but look at this. That cap right there, which is an original cap, has just completely blown itself open. It's a 047. I haven't looked it up on the schematic to see exactly where it is yet, but it's a 047. Um, and then look what's happened to the, in, the uh, internals of it just shot out over this way. It probably shorted some other things over this way too while it was while it was in here on. The, weirdly enough, the, uh, uh, the the neither one of those fuses that are in this thing blew, so the, the fuse didn't blow. So I'm assuming it was sitting there on with this you know this inside of it. And I noticed while I was taking um, taking this apart, like the tubes when I took the tubes out, they're kind of covered in a. They're kind of covered, I don't know if you see it, yeah, see there? Kind of covered in a greasy substance. Well, that's the, that's the uh, dielectric inside of that cap right there. And then look at the internals just blew itself across the amp. Very interesting failure. I mean, it's not the first time I've seen a failure like this, but uh, it's, it's definitely one of the uh, scarier, more spectacular ones if you are playing the amp at the time that it happens because, you know, obviously you're going to hear a pop and then you're going to you're going to see probably some sparks or some smoke and that's exactly what happened to this guy. So, I'm going to replace this, test some voltages that are around this point and make sure everything's still running okay, but I'm presuming it's just a just a cap failure. It's an old cap. Now, I'd assume this cap was probably okay because it's it's one of these that's uh, ceramic encased. But this goes back to the point of, you know, I, I get a lot of flack sometimes. Why are you ch fixing something that's not broken? Well, here's why. Because this old cap right here, and you can see all the electrolyte that I'm going to have to clean up down here too. You see all that that's oozed out of it right there, or exploded out of it. Um, but we'll have, to, you know, we'll have to spray all this out, clean it all up, get that out of here, replace that cap with probably a higher value cap um, wattage-wise. But we'll, we'll have to see what the failure what caused it to fail as well but the, you know back to my point uh you know i get a lot of flack it's like you know why are you fixing something that that isn't broken well you know because these sorts of things happen on old equipment particularly when you uh, put older equipment on modern voltages because back at the time this thing came out you know the wall voltage was probably closer to 115 or 110 volts even and now our wall voltage is up to about 120 volts so by the time you get to the secondary of the power transformer, that voltage could shoot up, you know, to 30, 40 volts, you know, of difference. So it can be pretty, uh, pretty massive difference once it gets into the circuit. And it could be that uh, a cap that was rated properly when this thing came out is no longer rated properly or is, you know, right up, butting right up against its rating threshold uh, because of the current wall voltages. Now we do know that this amplifier was already uh, running a speaker that was um, that was not appropriate. It was a what I say a 12 watt speaker or something like that, in an amplifier that really puts out something closer to 15 to 18 watts at peak. So obviously that speaker could not handle the peak uh, that peak output of this amplifier. So you know just silly to put that speaker in, and this could be a case where. Uh, also, this was an underrated capacitor, but you know, 
actually this one's 600 not not 400 so you know it's probably not that it's just a failure of some kind so we'll have to figure out what caused it to fail and if we can't figure out what caused it to fail and we'll just chalk it up to a faulty component and that's it but yeah fairly spectacular failure I thought you guys would get a kick out of if we check out the underside of this plate look at this you can see all of the uh, the electrolyte I think this might actually be oil I don't know anyway uh, we're gonna have to clean all this up I'll go ahead and get all this crap out of here I want to see where exactly <clears throat> that capacitor is in the circuit too C24 is a death cap it's odd that it blew itself apart and that and that a fuse didn't blow first because we got a 3 amp and a 6 amp fuse here the 3 amp fuse should have you would think would blow before a, a 600 volt death cap but this is actually my bad for not removing the death cap. I bet this thing actually would work fine we'll just clip out this death cap I'm not sure how I missed that I think what happened is I looked I assumed that the death cap was gone because I didn't see it up on top because again you know you have to take this bottom panel out in order to get to the bottom so this is my mistake for not removing that death cap in the first place but I think this amp is probably going to be okay it just you know obviously that's a pretty big bang and a big scare and you know, we replaced the power cord and all that stuff so I mean it's three prong it's uh, grounded so we're not going to need uh, definitely not going to need a death cap in here and and truth be told that's something I should have uh, already clipped out but again that was just it just so happened that it was on the bottom of the board instead of where I would have assumed it to be which was up on top interesting failure just a complete explosion very interesting but you can see how the cap how caps are made now basically you have two foils and they're separated by a dielectric you can see here's the foil probably wearing gloves for this but a little uh, this would be the dielectric material this stuff and then you have this foil on either side um, that is separated by the dielectric and then you have the whole thing kind of soaked or uh, inside of a uh, solution um, which in this case it looks like it might be oil but yeah interesting failure we're gonna go ahead and clean all this up I'll just spray it out with some uh, cleaner and yeah Fun one. Oh, look, yeah, see, I'm gonna go wash my hands. We're just gonna get some napkins. Spray some of this. We'll just, we'll just absorb uh, this. There's not very much actually on the top side, a little bit. I don't know why I'm talking to a microphone that's behind my head. So anyway, we'll fire it up. <clears throat> yeah, man, I just gotten over a cold the other day. I had to take my daughter to the uh, to the hospital, the emergency room. So we took her in the emergency room, and obviously, I mean, you're going into a pediatric emergency room. As much as they try to cleanse everything and sterilize everything, it ain't gonna happen. You know what I mean? You're going to be sitting on the same chairs that the family's sitting on before you. And if their kid had pneumonia or flu or whatever before you, you're going to end up getting it all. So going in the hospital, that's the worst thing you can do if you want to stay. <clears throat> if you want to stay healthy, is go to the hospital, <laughs> which is fairly ironic. But she, you know, fractured her arm. We didn't have much choice, so. Okay. Um, let's see what happens now. Let's see if we get any explosions. I don't feel any problems so far. Usually when I'm turning this up, if there are any shorts, uh, and you guys often wonder, you ask me, you know, why don't you have a dim bulb? Uh, because, well, I've got this meter on here, and when by the time I get to half voltage, uh, I can feel if something is uh, shorted right off the bat because this thing will actually vibrate and warn me that something is shorted. So it, it, it doesn't like it at all if, uh, you know, the leads, the output leads are shorted or if there's a short in the, uh, if it's drawing too much current, it, it will tell you 
with by vibrating. So it's kind of like having a dim bulb in a way. It's just that the dim bulb is something that you feel instead of see. So a lot of you have asked me about that and said, why don't you have a dim bulb? Well, that's why. <clears throat> I just haven't bothered to make one because I've, I just, you know, I realized that this thing was, uh, was uh, allowing me to, to figure out problems before they arose anyway. So it was, I don't know. But one of the reasons I bought this isolation uh, transformer that's here on the desk is because I was going to make an all-in-one setup. I was going to actually disassemble this, um, fix this meter so that it goes all the way to zero, uh, install the internals in this and this and a dim bulb tester in one unit. So eventually that's that's the plan, but we'll uh, we'll get to that as it comes. I can hear output, so that's good. We're only drawing 44 watts at 93 volts. I think this thing is actually going to be more efficient because probably what was going on is it was drawing some a little bit of current, probably some microcurrent the whole time through that leaky capacitor. So it was dry, probably driving up the, uh, the overall current draw of this thing. But yeah, all the tubes are fired up just fine. I'll go through and test some voltages and whatnot too, but I don't think we're going to have any issues here. This is just a case of the... Uh, a faulty capacitor just blew its top and, it, and luckily it was a capacitor that we're not going to need going forward anyway but yeah see this is one of the things that you know I I, uh, I like to show on the channel because it it you know it uh, I think it inspires people to see somebody who's supposed to know what he's doing ie me um, screw up and show the screw up and show what to avoid and you know, because things happen. You know, I've, I've simply forgot to uh, clip out the death cap because I didn't realize it was mounted on the bottom of the board. I thought it was mounted, you know, up where the power stuff was. So, su assumption is the mother of all. Well, what's the what's the word? This thing's going to be just fine. Uh, I see no issues. We're not drawing any kind of excess power. We're setting it, you know, we're setting at 800 milliamps uh, at idle. Yeah, we're 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 just fine with this. This is not going to be an issue. Good deal, super deal. Yeah, I told the guy when he brought it. I said uh, it sounds to me like you had some kind of cap failure, and I was afraid it was going to be. Uh, one of the power caps that I had installed and the thing about those caps is those are the cheapest ones that you can get through Antique Electronic Supply which is my supplier and uh, I buy those because they're I've never had a failure with them I've never known one of those to fail uh, in an amplifier yet uh, that I've installed so I mean fingers crossed I might get a I might get a run of them here you know that, that are bringing them back that I've installed but uh, so far so good with those man and I like them and they're they're cheap they don't uh, cost an arm and a leg like some like the Sprague's do. J, uh, JJ's are a little more reasonable, and so are um, so are F and T's. Uh, they're more reasonable than Sprague. Sprague's just are kind of the you know they they cost uh, a lot by comparison. You could do a whole amp for the cost of one Sprague, you know, so in, in these caps. So I I thought at first that maybe it was one of those, and maybe I was going to see my first explosion of one of those caps. But luckily, no, not the case at all. So it just turned out to be an old component that uh, I had not yet taken out. So, so yeah, this is going to be a no charge, and it'll go back to the customer, and I think he's going to be happy with it. So, yeah, that'll do it for this video. hope you guys enjoyed this little, this little interesting look at a uh, failure of mine, or pseudo-failure, I suppose. <laughs>
I want to thank you because I put these to good use this time around whenever I got into this amplifier and it really made quick work of it. So thank you very much. I appreciate that and it's already gone to good use.